one mile in fog patches and showers early Friday, but improving to greater than six miles on Friday morning. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> Thank you. So it's finally. <laughs> can't talk. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So last week it was literally like a high of 80 degrees and now it is a high of 50 and it feels like it happened literally overnight. Um, so it is officially the time of the year where I am always freezing and just want to be wrapped up in a blanket all day. So that has inspired today's project. And this has actually been on my like little sewing list for such a long time. I've wanted to do this for so long. And we're going to be making a cozy jacket out of a quilt. And I thought this was funny timing because I literally just made my quilt DIY. So uh, you can always make a quilt and then do this, but I was feeling kind of lazy and didn't want to make a whole nother quilt. So I just got this one off of Amazon. Uh, but you could also totally like thrift quilts, I'm sure. I've also seen some people who take like family, like old family quilts and then turn them into jackets so that they're like used more and stuff. Um, so it's a really fun like way to use stuff like this. <laughs> And like I said, I just always want to be under the covers. So I'm hoping this might help me get motivated to actually do stuff while it's freezing outside. But um, like I said, I got this one from Amazon. It is a queen size, which is probably a little bit bigger than I'm going to need. Oh, Basil really likes it too. I've given her the pillowcases to sleep on because she keeps wanting to hang out on the quilt, which I might make into a little jacket for her later so we match. I'm tempted, but I'm hoping this will be a pretty easy project. It's gonna be like just a really basic jacket. So it should be beginner friendly. So um, yeah, let's get started while I'm motivated to make something that's winter wear. Like I said, for some reason, Basil just really loved this quilt. And I'm not gonna make her a little matching jacket in this video, um, but it might be something that I make like on TikTok. So you can always follow me there if you would wanna see something like that. Um, but for these pattern pieces, they're honestly pretty simple. Um, I'm making this a really oversized style, so it could probably fit a bunch of different sizes. And the first piece here is the front piece. Um, we're just going to be cutting two of these. And the front is almost basically just the back piece cut in half. There's just some very minor differences. Um, and then for the sleeve piece, this is probably like the most complicated one to cut out, but I always just kind of freehand these and they tend to work out for me. Um, but one thing when you're making them is they're going to be almost symmetrical except one side should just be slightly smaller than the other and the bigger side is going to be the back side and then this is just kind of a jumble of pieces but I didn't actually end up using the back cinch I was just planning to attach it to the back with two buttons but I didn't have enough matching buttons to include it now before we get to sewing I very quickly want to take a minute and talk about the sponsor of today's video care of and care of is a subscription service that sends you high quality personalized vitamins supplements and powders to your door every month and if you're someone like me who gets a little bit overwhelmed trying to figure out what kind of vitamins I should be taking care of is perfect for you because they have a super convenient online quiz that asks you a few quick questions about your diet health goals and lifestyle so they can recommend the right vitamins and supplements for your specific lifestyle and health goals. And care of also makes it really easy to remember to take your daily vitamins because they come in these daily personalized packs. And these are also made out of a plant-based film that makes it compostable. And some of the vitamins that are included in my daily package are keratin because I said I wanted to focus on my hair health, as well as a vitamin B12 for energy support and a multivitamin to fill any of my nutritional gaps. And these little daily packages have made it super easy to work into my daily routine. And they're also so cute. They oftentimes have like little questions on them or motivational things and I just think it's really precious. So you guys should take the care of quiz to see what vitamins and supplements they recommend for you. And then you can click the link in my description and use my code PAPERSTARS and you will get 50% off your first order with care of. Thank you so much to care of for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get to sewing. All right, now that we have all of our pieces, which by the way, the queen size quilt like fit them perfectly and I just had just a little bit left over, but I also decided to make my coat super long. So if you want a shorter style coat, you can probably get like a full size. But uh, now I'm going to take my front and back pieces and putting them pretty side to pretty side, I'm going to attach one of my front pieces to either side of my back piece and I'm going to sew them together down their side seams and shoulder seams.
And then I'm going to go ahead and serge those edges. Alright, and now I just tried on the coat and I decided I did want it to be a little bit more shapely than it is right now. So I added some pins and tried it on to make sure this is where I want them. And now I'm just going to start up here and take it in a little bit and then make it go back out. And I'd say I'm taking off about two inches on either side. And now we're going to bring in our sleeves and fold them in half. And we're just going to sew them together down this seam here. And now we're going to take both of our sleeve pieces and we're going to add two parallel basting stitches starting about here, going around and stopping in here. And we're going to use that to help fit the sleeve to the armhole. And a basting stitch is just the longest stitch on your machine. So I'm just putting it on my regular straight stitch and turning the length all the way up. And now we're going to bring the rest of our coat back in and I'm going to turn our sleeve right side out. And while I was cutting it out, I showed you guys that one side should be a little bit bigger on your sleeve. And the bigger side is the back side. So I'm going to take our sleeve and I'm going to put it pretty side to pretty side with the right armhole. And I'm going to line up the bottom seams first and pin them in place. And I'm going to keep pinning it up until we reach those basting stitches. And now our sleeve should just be a little bit bigger than the top of our armhole. So we're going to take those basting stitches and we're going to pull on two of the stitches on the same side of the fabric. And when you pull those, it should start to gather up the fabric. And we're just going to lightly gather it up so that it can fit into the armhole. <laughs> those little barks are Basil sleeping. <laughs> She's totally out. And once that's pinned in place, we can sew all the way around with a regular straight stitch. And once you're happy with the sleeve, you can go ahead and take out the basting stitches. Now that our sleeves are all done, I'm going to go ahead and start adding in our pocket. Um, and this step's optional, you don't have to do it, but I want somewhere to put my hands so that they can get all nice and warm. Um, and so I tried on my coat and I marked out like where I want the pocket to go. And so now I'm going to mark the bottom of this piece. And we're only going to be seeing the top of the pocket. The big part of the pocket's actually going to be on the inside, so you just need to mark this little piece, which I just folded in half. And then I'm going to take this off. And I think I want the lining to be the part that's sticking out instead of the pattern. So I'm going to make that my pretty side and fold this in half. And I'm going to stitch it down either side. And then I'm going to turn this piece right side out. And I'm going to just baste the bottom edges together here so that this will lay nice and flat. And now I'm going to bring that part of my jacket that we marked out again back. And I'm going to take this piece that we just sewed and I'm actually going to flip it upside down and line it up with that edge. And then I'm going to take our other pocket pieces and I'm going to have one of them match up with this same edge here and pin these all together. And then I'm going to take one more piece and I'm going to put this one up here and again match up these edges. You know, and I actually should have made these pockets a little bit wider so that they go a little bit past this because right now we have just a really tiny seam allowance. But um, where we hit this little flap here, that's where we're going to pivot our edges on either side. So we're going to sew down one edge here on one side of this like raw edge. And then we're going to turn it and kind of make a little rectangle right over this. And then we're going to sew back the other side and again pivot and go to the other side. So we're basically just sewing like a really skinny little rectangle.
And so you just want to pivot right when you hit this part here. And now that that's sewn in place, we're very carefully going to cut the very center of it out. And actually this might be easier to do it on the side where you can actually see the seam that we made. So I'm just going to cut this, but not all the way to that straight edge. When we reach this little square corner, we're actually going to go about like a centimeter away from the edge of our seam. And then we're going to make diagonal cuts into the corners from there. And then turning it back right side out, we can push all of these pieces into that little opening. And on the back side, now we're going to take both of our big pocket pieces and we're going to sew them together across all of these seams here. And then the last little thing to do on this pocket is to just top stitch the edges here down. And now we have this super adorable pocket. Um, and the only thing I'm going to do is just try to serge or zigzag stitch as many of these raw edges as I can on the back. And I'm just taking the excess of my quilt um, and I'm actually going around all of the edges and seam ripping out this bias tape because I'm going to use this to finish my coat. And you could totally also just buy bias tape or make your own. Um, but you know, I figured this one's here and it perfectly matches my fabric, so might as well use it. And now this is the neckline of our jacket and we still need to attach the collar. Um, but before we do that, I'm actually going to finish up this edge here as well as this one because the collar is gonna start here so that we have a little bit of overlap for our buttons. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to round out this edge a little bit and go about an inch in and half an inch deep. And then I'm just gonna cut straight up. And so this is the edge we're going to finish and this is where we're going to attach our collar. So now I'm going to take my bias tape and I'm just going to fold this edge over before I put it on because that'll give us a finished edge. And then I'm going to start attaching it around my raw edges. And I tried to make my bias tape go all the way around up to the other side of the collar, but I didn't seam rip quite enough, so I'm going to finish seam ripping that, and then we can just finish up all of these raw edges up to the collar. So like I said, I just finished adding bias tape all around the sides, bottom, and all around the other side. And next we have to add on the collar. So I'm going to take our two collar pieces, and I'm really on the fence if I want it to be the quilted side or the yellow pattern, um, but I think I'm going to do the quilted side. So I'm going to put these two pieces pretty side to pretty side, and I'm going to sew them together around these edges here. And now at these corners, I'm going to dog ear them, which means I'm just going to cut straight across without cutting into my seam so that it has an easier time turning right side out. And now that it's right side out, I'm actually going to take one of my sides and I'm going to fold it up about half an inch and I'm going to pin it in place. And I think I'm just going to baste this little edge down so that we have an easier time sewing up the collar once we put it on the jacket. And I'm going to stop before I get to either seam. So this is just to kind of help us later. And so now I'm going to bring our coat back in and I'm going to take the side that we still have the raw edge on. And starting from this seam, I'm going to match that up where we started sewing our bias tape. And I'm going to start pinning the collar all around the neckline. And then I'm going to sew this all the way across, starting and stopping at each of these seams.
And this seam is looking pretty thick, so I'm going to search down this edge to hopefully take off some of that thickness. So that definitely helped make this a little bit flatter. And now since we've already basted these edges and have a finished seam here, I'm just going to lay this on top of this open seam down here, pin it together. <laughs> it's very thick though. And then once this is all pinned, we're going to just sew across this bottom edge. And then I'm going to take out these basting stitches. And then I think I'm also going to stitch around the perimeter of the collar to make it lay a little flatter. All right, and now that the collar is done, we're going to finish up the bottom of the sleeves, which should just be really fast. Um, and so I already pinned this one and tried it on to make sure that this length fit me well. Um, and so I want to do this really big like cuff around my sleeves. And so to do that, I already surged around this bottom edge here to get rid of those raw edges. And now I'm going to fold it up an inch and a half, which yours doesn't have to be this thick, but I want these to be like really poofy and cozy. And then I'm going to fold it up again for three inches. And then I'm just going to pin it in place. And now you could just stitch it all the way around, um, but I don't really want the look of that because it is so poofy, it's going to kind of indent it. So I'm just going to do a few tacking stitches all the way around the top edge so that you don't really see it, but that the cuff is held in place. All right, and now we are almost done with this coat. The very last thing we have to do is add the front. I was gonna say add the fronts down the back. We have to add the buttons down. That's, that doesn't even make sense. Um, the last thing we have to do is add the buttons down the front. And so I tried it on and I marked out where I want all the buttons to go. Mine are all eight inches apart. And quite honestly, I probably would have put them a little closer and not put so much space between them. Um, but I was going through my button stash and could only find four of these buttons to use. So this is what I'm doing. <laughs> And so I'm just going to switch out my presser foot for my buttonhole, stick the little button in the back, and set my machine to a buttonhole stitch. And now that the buttonholes are done, I'm just laying this on top of the other side of the jacket. And I'm going to take a water soluble pencil and just mark out all of the holes so I know where to sew my buttons. And now the very last step is to just sew on all the buttons. And then we're totally done! And here is the final coat. This is definitely going on my list of one of my favorite things I've ever made. I really, really hate cold weather and I always have a hard time like feeling cute when it's cold. Um, but this totally does the trick. I wore it to class when it was like 40 degrees outside and I was so warm and cozy and it's also just so stinking cute. I got so many compliments on it all throughout the day and those pockets do such a good job at keeping my hands warm because they are like so thick and padded. And like I said, I'm just always freezing. So this is definitely going to be something I'm wearing all winter. And also I just had to leave in this little interaction I had. This girl was so sweet. Your jacket is so cute. Thanks, I made it. Really? It's yeah. so beautiful. I forgot you were a <laughs> It was a quilt. <laughs> Good job. I love it. Thank you. But uh, yeah, that's the whole tutorial. I hope you guys liked it. Like I said, this project really isn't too hard. So I hope you guys give it a try and hope you guys stay warm this winter. I'll see you guys later.